We have Coach Hypo with us. He will go directly to questions. We'll start, Coach, over here to your left on the second row. Hey, Coach, you were an OC at Mizzou in 2016-2017. What do you remember about playing Kentucky then, and what do you know about the team now? Yeah, um, I remember the last game in particular, uh, tight ball game, back and forth. Um, you know, they're athletic, they're physical. Uh, they were long at that time. They still are today. I think they've continued to evolve inside the program. Uh, lost a tight one, came down to, you know, one of the last plays in the minute. And I think we had a wide receiver, got the ball batted down in a, in a two-minute situation, cost us a little bit of clock. We'll go to your right, Coach, front row. Good. Uh, Tyler Shaw with KBTX and College Station. Coach, um, as a national champion quarterback, how excited are you to come to a, a fan base and, and a program like Tennessee, who's had you know success at the quarterback with with Peyton Manning? And w w what's your relationship with Peyton? Yeah, great, great tradition of great quarterback play. Peyton Manning, Team Martin. Um, you come to Tennessee. I came to Tennessee because you want to be a part of an iconic program uh, where the fan base is passionate, loves it, breathes it. It's 365 days out of the year. You know, I said in my introductory press conference, like when it's recruiting season, they care about recruiting. They care about spring ball. And I mean, they want to know what's going on in summer workouts. You want to be at a place where football matters 365 days out of the year. The passion uh, of our fan base is, is unsurpassed anywhere. And, and uh, uh, you know, it's our challenge as coaches and players to celebrate the great traditions there, but put a new age approach on it and get us back to where we need to be. We'll stay on the front row here, Coach, to your right. Hey, Coach, Mike Lucas, KXTV and College Station. It's a two-part question, but they're tied together. What's the quarterback situation like for you guys? And as a former quarterback, when you look around the conference, how high is the quarterback level throughout the SEC right now? Uh, quarterback battle for us, we got four guys that are vying for it right now. Three of them were there during uh, the course of spring ball. I think it's really important that you give players an opportunity to grow from the last time that they stepped on the field in spring ball. Uh, you give them opportunity to understand your system better, uh, grow physically and fundamentally uh, throughout the course of the summer, and then you get into training camp. And guys are going to earn more reps. Guys are going to earn their way out of the race as well. But you got to give them that opportunity. I think it's imperative that your football team, offensively, defensively, staff, understand that when you pick a guy, He's earned the right to be your guy. Uh, inevitably for him, there's going to be great plays. There's going to be a couple bad plays too. He's got to respond the right way, but the guys around him got to believe in him too. And so you got to go through that process. And as a guy earns the right to be our guy, that's when we'll name a starter. Coach, to your left front row. Coach Dan Harrelson, Ballswire. Uh, you mentioned your playing days. Uh, just talk about maybe some of the coaches that you played for or even coached for when you started getting into coaching. Have you taken anything from those coaches, whether it's offensive concepts or just how to run a program into your early stages of UCF and now here? Yeah, I think you're taking bits and pieces for, from all of them, right? Um, you know, as a player, I got my start because of Mike Leach, right? That's the guy that recruited me when he came from uh, from Kentucky at that time and and introduced, and introduced throwing the, the football in, in Oklahoma. Uh, played for a legendary coach and, and Bob and coach for him as well. And uh, just how he an, handled everything inside of his program was never too high, never too low. Uh, his ability to communicate. You take things from, from all those guys. You know, uh, Matt Wells, uh, when I was with him, uh, Barry Odom at, at uh, at Missouri, um, you know, a guy that you know I still talk to quite a bit is, is Brent Venables, and and just as a player watching him, how he communicated, how he handled his players, the effort that he put into it, the detail, and then being around him as an assistant coach at the same time as him. Coach, to your right, second row. Hi, Coach Angela Moria, News 12 in Chattanooga. You keep mentioning New Age philosophy. What is New Age to you? How do you define it? New Age different in the way that we play offensive football, different in the tempo that we play, uh, different in the way that we approach every single day, how we lift, how we train. Um, you know, different in the way that we communicate and interact with our players, different in the way that we celebrate our time away from the game together. And, and to me, uh, I think that's really important. You got to give, it's about the player experience, right? And just having been a player, right? I've hoisted a national championship trophy. It's important. It was awesome. It's memorable, right? But that's not the only piece of it. That player experience is important. So giving them some of the ownership and the things that matter, and that might be new, different uniform combinations, whatever it might be, letting them have a great experience. Coach, to your left front row. 
Coach Jake Nichols with Sports Illustrated Volunteer Country. Can you speak a little bit on that player experience, on you know the the relationships that have been created so far? You talk about you know creating that family and making sure that that's done. Bayless and Alante both mentioned that that you're around a lot, that you're really with your guys, and that um, they've really seen those bonds formed so far in and outside of the locker room. What's that been like to watch? I think you're you're constantly uh, growing in that way. That's never a final product you never get to an end result it's something that that you got to do every single day and I think it's you know one of the things I've learned is that every interaction is has such a ripple effect to it and you got to be very mindful of every interaction that you have and never speak out of uh, emotion right always speak from passion but never emotion and um, you know as we got or I got there and our staff got uh, to, to Knoxville, it was one of the things that they felt like was missing, but it's got to be a foundational piece of, of who we are, not just for the seven months leading up to kickoff, but who we are every day from here on this point forward. And, and those are relationships that matter to me as a player. Uh, I want to be that and have those relationships as, as, a, as a coach as well. I look at my dad's experiences, a uh, long-time Division II head coach, and the relationships that he's formed and maintained and the impact that you have on lives. Uh, that part of college football matters to me too. And you can work really hard. You can strain every day inside of the game but you can have a heck of a lot of fun while you're doing it, and you can create great bonds that last forever outside of the game too. Coach, to your right, front row. Coach, in talking with your players, there's a lot of enthusiasm and excitement about the system you're bringing in and your offense. Um, you know, and here in year one, what, uh, what's your focus on getting this program back on track and, you know, to build towards this kind of success you had at UCF? Yeah, I think you can't get caught up in the, the long-term goal, right, of, you know, a certain amount of wins or a certain amount of productivity. you got to focus on what you can control and your controllable is today. It's one of the things we've been talking and stressing to our, our football team. You know, the tempo and the, the pace that we want to play with, right, we want that on offense, but we want that same aggressive mentality on the defensive side of it. And talking to our players, that's one of the things that uh, they struggled with uh, previously. And, and we want those guys to p play with their hair on fire, cut it loose, let it rip on game day, not be afraid of making a mistake. And that's, tried, that's what we've tried to implement uh, while creating a competitive environment inside of our building every day, but uh, one in which our players are, are feel free to, to go let it rip. Coach, to your left on the fourth row. Eric Kane, the Sports Animal, VolQuest.com. You mentioned your dad coached Division II, longtime Division II. Yeah. Coach. Where did yeah. he coach? Northern State University, uh, Aberdeen, South Dakota. Um, he was a defensive coordinator. I grew up on the other side of the ball and <laughs> sitting in linebacker and DB meetings. A good deal. Well, my question is, uh, Joey Halsey mentioned uh, back in the spring that when you evaluate a quarterback, you're looking for, you know, you know, mentals up here and then accuracy and then mobility. That's kind of the checklist. Uh, would you have anything else to add to that when you're kind of evaluating and, and deciphering which quarterback is best for your offense? Man, there's a thousand other things that go into it, right? Uh, the guys that play at the highest level. But I think ultimately they got to be a great competitor, right? Like that's got to be their driving force every day, uh, having a, an extreme competitive nature. It drives them when you're not around them. And that's got to be transcended throughout your entire football team too. And, and uh, your championship teams, it, it comes from the guys and the accountability and the standards inside of the locker room. Your quarterback's got to be a huge piece of that. Coach Far right, third row. Chase McKay, BSPN 1025 of the game in Nashville. Coach, uh, with NIL and with the more open transfer portal, that line between collegiate sports and professional is becoming more and more blurred. How important is it to allow opportunities to continue to evolve, but also keep what makes college sports special intact? Man, I, one, you don't want to lose what's special about college sports, which is a growing experience for young men, 18 to 22, 23 years old, transform, prepare them for life, um, while giving them every tool to go chase their dreams inside of the game, right? Like it's one of the most special times in your life, having gone through it as a player. Uh, no, we've completely embraced, and, and our staff has too, right? The, the name, image, and likeness is an opportunity for kids to, to you know, capitalize on some of the opportunities that, in some ways that they've earned. And I look back on my career, and I think that would have been uh, an opportunity that was, was missed at that time. But I think it changes the landscape and the scope of, of how your kids think when they walk onto your campus too. They now are thinking so much more about building a brand, building their resume, 
who and what they need to do, the decisions that they need to make. Uh, I think it's got an opportunity to accelerate their growth curve as young men as well. We have time for two questions. First, your front row coach to your left. Anthony Patterson with the Atlanta Boys newspaper. Um, coach, I know the talk of the town is the quarterback battle. Um, got so four awesome quarterbacks. But one in particular is Harrison Bailey's from the state of Georgia, the state champion. What are some things you've seen from him that you like and know for sure that he can bring to the table? Smart, competitive. Uh, he cares about his teammates. Uh, he's going to push them in, in a really positive way every single day. He's going to pour into his teammates. He's uh, one of the first guys in the building every single day. It matters to him greatly. And that's why he's continued to grow so much inside of our, our program. Final question for Coach to your right front row. I know it's your first season in the SEC, Coach, but there have been talks about possibly expanding to a nine-game league schedule as opposed to an eight-game. Would you be in favor of adding that extra league game, or do you like it where it's added with uh, eight games at the moment? Man, I have absolutely no thoughts. I haven't thought about that at all at this point. I'm trying to control our own controllables in Knoxville right now. Coach, thank you very much for your time. Good okay, luck Okay, thank you, guys. Appreciate it.